NASA is warning of powerful solar storms over the coming days and weeks as an active part of the sun rotates into view. Now, this extreme space weather can disrupt communications, navigation systems, and power grids around the world. And if that sounds concerning, the results of the first ever nationwide space weather emergency drill likely won't offer much relief. Joining me now to talk more about the test drill and our preparedness is Dan Riskin, CTV space and technology expert. Dan, good to speak with you. Great to talk to you. Before we get to that drill, ex first tell me exactly what a solar storm is and how does it threaten us here on Earth? Well, the sun is this big thing in the sky that most of the time just does what it's supposed to do. It, it gives off heat, it gives off light, and we all go about our business. But the thing is, if you look at it more carefully, the sun's much more dynamic than we give it credit for. And every 11 years or so, it goes through these solar cycles where uh, it's, at certain times in that cycle, like right now, there are lots of sunspots, there's lots of storms on the surface of the sun, and there are lots of these coronal mass ejections, huge chunks of polarized matter going flying out into space and flying in all directions and most of it doesn't hit us but every once in a while something can come our way and when that happens uh, we're usually protected by our magnetic field but you know it, we can only handle so much and so when you get a really extreme event on the sun sometimes that can have repercussions here on earth all right now let's talk about this first ever emergency drill which from what i understand didn't exactly go well did it well, if the purpose was to figure out where the problems are, they did great. Because <laughs> they found a lot of problems. So uh, basically, the U.S. Uh, has a whole bunch of different agencies that sort of need to jump into action if there's a, an event. And th the thing about the space weather is you probably are going to get about a 30-minute warning. So, the, you, so astronomers are going to say, whoa, there's something on the surface of the sun. We should batten down the hatches. And then 30 minutes later, GPS can be wiped out. Uh, power grids can go out. Uh, uh, we can have all kinds of huge uh, problems to our infrastructure here on Earth. And the question is, are we prepared? Are the different agencies ready to talk to each other and to mitigate that response? And, and so what they found in a nutshell is that nobody had a clue what they were doing. People didn't even really understand what it was that they had to worry about. And so it was a good drill in the sense that it got those different agencies to realize that they sort of don't have their act together. And the good news for all of us is that these are rare events. I mean, we, these solar cycles happen every 11 years and we haven't had any major you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any major eruptions happening in this cycle, nor the one before it, nor the one before that. But if you go back to 1859, there is an event called the Carrington event where there was some pretty severe space weather. And, you know, it was a long time ago, 1859, we didn't have the kinds of infrastructure we have today, but there were telegraphs and those telegraph lines uh, had enough of a disruption that they got very, very hot. And the people giving, sending telegraphs were burned by the, uh, the heating up of the wires. And so it is, uh, it is, if that's what it could do when we had just a few wires distributed on our planet, just imagine how big the impact could be today. All right, work, I take it underway to kind of fill some of those gaps uh, in the test system. But how concerned should, should we be about the impact of solar storms on Earth? Should we be, you know, doing anything to prepare our families and households? Dan, do you have a solar storm emergency <laughs> kit in your house? <laughs> No, but I have some tuna in the shelf upstairs. I'm, I'm <laughs> counting on that to get me out. I'm not much of a prepper, and if I were a prepper, I don't think this would be at the top of my list of things I'm worried about. It is something that uh, that municipalities, that governments, and that big corporations that have big networks distributed over large areas need to worry about. I mean, if you have, if your internet is completely reliant on satellites, for example, just knowing that those satellites could be wiped out with an event makes you, you know, realize you need to have a backup plan. So, you know. So individuals can think about this, but this really is more of a big problem for the people that run the infrastructure to keep our power grid running. Um, so, you know, as individuals, we have enough that we have to worry about in our day to day lives. I don't think this goes on the list, but I will say for all the potential negatives of this space weather, we also get gorgeous northern lights. And if there's one thing Manitoba gets more of than other parts of, of uh, the world, it's these beautiful northern lights. And so it's something to be celebrated as well. It's just it's part of the wonders of nature. Well, Dan, thanks for explaining it for us and putting it into context. Some of these headlines this week have been a little concerning, so we appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone can just calm down and look for Northern Lights. I think that's what we should all be doing. I'll get a T-shirt made that says, stay calm and look for Northern Lights. I like it. Send me one. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Bye-bye.